Today we have the very difficult task of ranking every single J. Cole song, including all of his studio albums and mixtapes such as The Warm Up and Friday Night Lights. We're going to be ranking them from number 119 to number 1 from worst to best. And let us know what you guys think of the rankings in the comments below. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more rankings just like this. So without further ado, bro, let's get into this list. Number 119, Mr. Nice Watch featuring Jay-Z off of the sideline story and... To me, this is just the biggest letdown. You have two of the best rappers of all time, and you're getting these lackluster verses and this very weird instrumental. Yeah, I think the beat really aged poorly, and even like just putting this on in my headphones now in 2022 doesn't sound that great. And even when it did drop, I mean, just seeing Jay Z featured on there, you thought it would be an automatic slapper, but I do think it's his worst song in his catalog. Let's go on to 118. Love Me Not on Friday Night Lights. This is a cheesy song. This really feels like J. Cole has a flower. Love me, love me not, love it's me, like love me not. It's like you turn into like a princess from, you know, an old Disney movie or something. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a bit weird in my opinion, but let's go on to number 117. Hello off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive. And listen, I know people are going to think this is a hot take, but the singing is weak. The hook is sort of repetitive and annoying. And I just think that it doesn't add much to that track list. It doesn't add much to the track list. I mean... Even like just the flows and melodies that he's experimenting with doesn't sound too great. And when you compare it to the rest of the track list on 2014, it just doesn't hold weight. So that's our 117 pick. Let's go on with the 116, Friends on KOD. And I think the thing I hate the most about this song, I wouldn't say hate, maybe dislike, you know, mm -hmm. use something nicer, is um, probably the flow and delivery he's using. Like that Kill Edward flow, like kind of aged poorly with me. I'm not too big of a fan of it. And going into Friends, it just doesn't sound good anymore as far as the track list yeah, goes. That's I, at least my I opinion. Think the Ego wasn't really um, a good execution. It was a good idea, but I don't think it was executed properly. But let's now go on to number 115, the very famous Fold and Close off of For Your Eyes Only. Is this his and most useless song? Bro, like, who the fuck wants to hear about Cole, like, just chilling at home, folding clothes? Like, it's probably his most boring song, and, you know, I don't want to hear about Cole's housework at the end of the day. And, again, a lot of people take issue with this song because For Your Eyes Only is such a concise track list, and then this just gets thrown in there. Yeah, and it's kind of like that dud out of the whole track list. But I feel like he has that with Loki, all of his albums. He has those couple of songs that kind of, yeah. like, are super out there within his track list, and that's something I noticed when we were doing the episode um, for the notes and everything. But let's go on to 114. 100 mil off of the offseason. A lot of people enjoyed this song. I personally don't. I mean, the, the new generation flow that he's using and like the super hype energy just comes off a bit too forced for me. Um, the production is just not that great. So yeah. I wanted to and include you it. You had like this referee yeah. disrespectfully blowing his whistle while Cole was trying to record. <laughs> Didn't fuck with that too much either. And um, like even like the vocal inflections are a bit like whiny and odd. Um, let's now go on to 113, ATM off of KOD, and there's another song from KOD coming up right after, and listen, I kind of get the point of the song here, he's just kind of repeating count it up, count it, to try to like personify someone who's in that mentality of just chasing dollar signs, but... I don't know. It sounds like Cole just cashed out of the casino. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it doesn't sound too great. I'm being honest yeah. with you. I think that the 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 thing with the 113 and 112 pick, because on 112 we have motivate as well. It's the hooks. But let's go on to 112 with motivate, and it's the same situation with me for ATM. The hook is just super. It's just super annoying, bro. You can't really put it on anymore. And like, there's songs on KOD that are going to be much higher on this list, and you'll understand yeah. why. And like, I feel like the dip down in quality on KOD lies within those two tracks, at least in my and opinion. And you get the point of these songs within the album, but I stand. And the lone tracks. No, not too good. There's not much uh, to revisit there. But let's now go on to number 111, which is the Kearney Sermon skit off of Born Sinner. Now we're going to start introducing some intros and skits. And this one's all right. I mean, you have a sermon who's kind of selling us a personal prayer package. So, if again, fits within the theme of the album, but I wouldn't listen to it on its own. But let's now go on to number 110, Ladies Off of the Warm Up. And... Yeah, I mean, it's Cole trying to get laid, right? Is that's there anything pretty, else to say? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's it's a romantic <laughs> song within his mixtape catalog and definitely not one of his greatest. But let's go on to 109, Best Friend off of Friday Night Lights. I think another cheesy song. And like Cole has a couple of these within the catalog. He does. I, I went into the re it. I went into the read dive and I'm like, geez, okay, there's definitely some duds in here, but it doesn't define him as a musician. It doesn't. Still, it doesn't. I but think I think we could agree that like oftentimes like his more love-centric songs end up being kind of weaker that's facts i think we could agree on that but let's now go on to number 108 to royal flush off of the warm-up and listen there's a cool bass line here but i think that the instrumental is a bit too chaotic like it sounds like cole's riding on the back of a motorcycle for how much fucking <laughs> background noise there seems to be within the production 
Um, and yeah, yeah I just, they, they needed to let stuff breathe on this Mixing and song. mastering wasn't great but either. Plus, I, I feel like Cole on this song was trying to like catch a certain type of flow that maybe he didn't achieve on this song. And I think that those are some things that you see within the warm-up. He's still trying to find himself as a rapper. And um, Royal Flush is a perfect example of that. So, clocks in at 108. But let's go on to 107, Cole World on the sideline story. I don't think this is a bad song whatsoever. Just in the context of a track list, like, I'm not really revisiting this all that much. And I do think it's one of the weakest off of the sideline story. And individually as a track, I haven't revisited this in years. Yeah, so totally once I did the redive yesterday, I just didn't like it as much either. But so number 106, note it. to self off of a 2014 Forest Hills drive. And similar to other members from The Rock, uh, Cole uses the outro to thank everybody who worked on the album. And it's like, I think like 15 minutes long. Yeah. It's super long. And you'll never catch me kind of listening to that in full, to be honest with you. So I think in terms of replay value, it doesn't really you know serve that much. But let's not go on to number 105. Ain't that some shit interlude off of Born Sinner? And I feel like Cole's rapping kind of just sounds outdated here. That's yeah, my major, it, like, nothing flaw. too crazy. Plus, it's just an interlude, you know? Like, these are not, like, those are not tracks that I usually revisit all that much because another thing, you know, I considered when doing my rankings was replay value. How much do I find myself going back to these songs? And that was something for Ain't That Some Shit. Facts. Um, 104 Amari off of the offseason. Hot take again. Another hot take here. A lot of people won't fuck with us just because of this one selection. <laughs> but to be honest with you, dude, like, those vocal inflections on the second verse completely throw off the song for me. Uh, I'm not a fan of the flows that he's using. And, like, I, I get it, you know? Know, like trying to get into his melodic rapping singing bag it just i just don't think it works that well i just here, feel you like know? vocally he's trying to find himself and he doesn't manage to do that because at one point he's trying to like you know sing on a serious level and then he's kind of just shouting into the mic and again he's trying to modernize his style but i just don't think it was that good of an attempt but let's now go into number 103 intro off of the sideline story mm -hmm. and Honestly, this one's a bit of a piss off because like when I first heard this track, he's telling you that he's going to tell you the story about how he got signed and then he doesn't do that on that intro and then he does it on an interlude later on, which I get it. He's setting up the album, but it kind of left you wanting a bit yeah. more. Plus, I have other track. intro tracks higher on the Absolutely. list. Example, like KOD's intro is phenomenal and you guys are going to see that later on in the list. But let's go into Losing My Balance off of the warm-up. Not too great of a track either. I think it's aged poorly and I find like that's something in comparison to the warm-up in, in contrast to Friday Night, Friday Night Lights. I think Friday Night Lights aged a lot better than the warm-up, but I still find a lot of value in there. I still like a bunch of songs yeah. on here. Just This song uh, has a heartfelt great. message, but I just think the guitar riff sounds a bit cheap in my opinion. But it's not going to number 101 another intro this time off of 2014 forest hills drive and there's something that's kind of like haunting but nice to hear cole just singing like you know are you really happy do you want to be yeah. happy i like that it's kind of intriguing but um i don't know i just don't think it's the best tone setter to be honest but number 100 where is jermaine off of born sinner and I know you're a fan of this skit just because it's the perfect gateway into Forbidden Fruit. Yeah, I really like how everything leads in together because you start to hear the jazzy production bleed into the end of the song um, from Forbidden Fruit at the end of this. And it's just cool because like they're kind of like in this, I guess, group band session. Choir or something. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's asking, you know, where the fuck's Jermaine? And then after that, boom, bleeds into Forbidden Fruit. And I, I honestly, like when I listen to Forbidden Fruit, I like to put on this skit before just because it's a nice like lead into it's the cool song. It's cool too as like a storytelling device because it's showing that like he's moving away from the church and his religious views to go into the forbidden fruit. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's cool. pretty fire. Number 99, though, intro off of Friday Night Lights. Um, it's kind of like the somber piano riff that kicks everything off. Great to set the mood. And again, it's Cole kind of just rapping about where he wants to be and, you know, kind of chasing his ambition. So that's a cool one. But number 98, another intro, this time off of the warm up. And I mean, kind of similar vibe to the FNL one. I just feel like, again, you have the piano chords and Cole is kind of, you know, telling you about the importance of chasing your dreams. Yeah, That's nothing really much is. going on there. But let's go on to interlude off of the sideline story. Another cool interlude. I don't think this one was bad at all. It was a nice break within the track list. It's just like, again, with J. Cole's interludes, it, it kind of serves a purpose or a gateway into another song or let's say a transition in the track list. And this is what it did for the sideline story. Just not revisiting it all that much. But let's go on to the KOD intro, right? So this is one of my favorite intros, if not my favorite, within his catalog. Uh, maybe besides, like, you know, other songs that we're going to get to on yeah. this list off of the off season, let's say. A little spoiler for the list. But, yeah, it's just cool to see, what you know, the way that the woman's talking about life and, you know, how people deal with pain. And is pain just a lack of understanding? And that's something that I hold in my life dearly. It sounds so. like she's a therapist putting you under hypnosis and, you know, letting you know, like, you got to make a choice here. You know what I mean? Are you going to take the path of, you know, being, I would say, um, thrown into all of these influences? Or are you going to make the wise choice 
and stay away from that shit. Um, but number 95, we have Runaway off of Born Sinner. Um, I think the song title does not help it because you're automatically going to compare it to Kanye's Runaway. And it doesn't really hold the candle to that track. And it's one of my most pl- least played off of Born Sinner. Honestly, I'm honest. a fan of this song, though. Yeah? Like, yeah, I, I do like this song. Like When I when I go from um, this to Trouble, um, or is it Trouble to, to Runaway? I can't remember. Someone correct me in the comments section. Um, I like that middle part of the track list. I think it holds well. It's just, it's not. It's definitely not one of the best off of Born Sinner. Um, but let's keep going on with this. I believe we 94. are currently... Uh, 94, Pride is the Devil off of the off season. And this is, a, this is a big standout for a lot of people, especially like new generation listeners that are trying to get into J. Cole. Um, a lot of people are a big fan of the baby verse, but I don't know. Like, it's just, it's, it has a nice message to it. I just don't gravitate towards yeah, it. Yeah, I just think that, like, Cole's take on trap isn't always the best. And the transition, you know, to little babies versus fire. I will give it points for that, but not too memorable of a track for me. Next up, number 93, Never Told mm-hmm. Off of the Sideline Story. Um, I love the tender guitar. I love the keys, the sample flips. No ID did a great job on the production. And it's a song about, like, showing you the dangers of cheating, which is, you know, pretty cool. But um, I just don't think that the performances, the, port- the performance, excuse me, from Cole is that great. Yeah, I'm on that same page with you. But let's go on to number 92, Water Break Off of the Warm Up. Um, this is another track where we had questions, you know, where do we place this? Was it in the 80s? Was it in the 90s? And um, when you go back to the warm up, this is definitely not a skip. You're definitely going to want to include this into your full listen. Um, I think it's you know, J. Cole's rapping is definitely on point. And within the warm up, as I said before, there are certain instances where you you know, you find Cole trying to find his groove and his flow, and I find he did a great job on this. You know, with the uh, with water break off of the warm up. Let's go on to photograph off of KOD at number ninety one. Um, this is an interesting track because I love this track off of first listen. It's just the one that kind of fell the hardest out of my rotation when it comes to that KOD studio album and heartfelt. You know, talking about a woman. You know, nothing much to it, but I like the groove on it. I like it's the pretty decent, story, bro. You're getting you know? like some cadences from Cole that are kind of unfamiliar. And I like to say that it plays, you know, really well into the album's theme of how, like, social media is a drug. I thought that was pretty clever, too. Um, but at number 90, we have God's Gift off of the Sideline Story. Um, another cool Cole song. I just don't think that it matches up with the best of the Sideline Story. Yeah, I'm on that same page. I would probably put it, like, maybe... It's an average song off of the Sideline Story. It's like it's not at the bottom of mid-tier. the list, but it's mid-tier off of the Sideline Story. But let's go on to work out again off of the Sideline Story. And this was a massive hit. I mean, it, it did so much for J. Cole as far as commercial goes, but I can't fucking stand that screaming in the background. If there was not that scream in the background in the production, I would have maybe put it like much higher off the list. That but hasn't impacted me that much, to be honest. Bro, I swear I can't listen to the song the same um, anymore. But I think that. that, you know, in terms of like Cole's radio-friendly songs... It's aged pretty well. The hook is fire. And I think that if you're comparing this song to a lot of the biggest pop rap songs of today, this would be better than a lot of those, to be honest with you, bro. All right. Um, But at number 88, we have Blow Up off of Friday Night Lights. And you were kind of arguing for this to be a bit higher. I just don't think that... I like the motivational energy within it. You know, like that's what I like about Cole's mixtapes. And I kind of get that through Blow Up. What I wanted to do with this song was maybe include it in the earlier 80s, maybe high 70s. But we ended up, you know, putting it at number 88. Let's go on to number 87. You got it off of Friday Night Lights. Um, I really like this track as well. I do think that it ranks, you know, mid-tier within um, Friday Night Lights. It's just, it's nice to keep you invested into the track list. Not much going on there. And it's not top tier on that mixtape. Number 86, Can I Live? off of the warm-up and i mean just like a lot of songs off of the warm-up you know you have cole rapping his ass off and it's a great track to be honest with you i really enjoy it all right let's keep going on with this number 85 another hot take a lot of people are going to look at us crooked for this one crooked smile no pun intended off of born sinner um beautiful message within the song i just think sonically and musically it hasn't aged the best with the uh, best with me yeah i'm not that big of a fan of his cadence that he's using in the flow as well i think it's a bit too soft for my liking and um i find like even when you're looking at j cole's best rapping performance and his best songs it's the ones that are the most aggressive and the ones where he's most locked in so i mean crooked smile is good but i just think that there's better concepts yeah i I just felt like it sounded a bit too laid back and the tlc chorus is all right but kind of gets annoying after repeated listens but let's now go on to number 84 mo money interlude off of born sinner i really fuck with this interlude definitely one of his best and i like how he's paying homage to biggie here like he does you know throughout the entire born sinner album and his rapping is fierce here like it's super bold and if you guys haven't heard it i definitely suggest it because it gets slept on but number 83 dollar and a dream three off of the sideline story 
Um, you know, you have the line about him being the shit and you can't out fart him on here and a couple of other Does that knock, bars. Did that knock down it points? It knocked it down, bro. I'm <laughs> did sorry. Did that knock down points? Like, I'm sorry. If the pen game isn't on par, like, I hold J. Cole to a very high standard. I hold him to that standard of the greatest of all time. And when you're going to be spitting bars like that, I got to knock down the points. Yeah, knock down some points on that one. But number 82, the cutoff off of KOD. Um, this is one of the stronger tracks off of KOD, to be honest with you. And, like, um, I, I like this rapping performance. It's definitely a lot, um, I would say, darker, like, more um, slower as far as a pace goes for a J. Cole song. But still really nice to the track list. Ranks mid-tier um, as far as that album goes for me. But let's keep going on with this. Um, I believe we're at, we're at the badness right now at number 81 off of Warm Up. I'm featuring Omen. I really like this song. I, I, I like how um, they're explaining negative energy, how they're explaining how that has an impact in their life. I love both of their verses, and I like how they're seamlessly, like, interconnected together. I do think it's super strong off of the Warm Up. And now, as the list goes on, you're going to see that that stronger tracks are going to start popping off absolutely and i think yeah the badness is great because they're really painting um you know their city as as hell essentially as a really bad nightmare and i think the lyrical the lyrical performances are solid but number 80 we have dreams off of the warm-up and this is a very uplifting song without a doubt super and, good energy um yeah i just love the soul that you know cole is kind of projecting throughout it to be honest yeah let's go on to number 79 higher another um another song from a mixtape off of friday night lights and same thing with dreams for me when it comes to higher just super high voltage energy from j cole um ranks higher in my listing for friday night Lights song so something i wanted to also consider consider maybe in the lower 70s i we were talking about that yesterday night when doing the ranking but number 78 looking for trouble off of friday night lights once again um i like how we include you know really like went into the mixtapes and had like a lot of decisive picks because the thing with the mixtapes is that a lot of songs kind of sound similar you know where he's you know, kind of experimenting off a lot of different beats that were already released a lot of the same but flows, this one's but, different because but it's this actually, one is different. it's a good friday track yes. that kanye was releasing in anticipation for my beautiful dark twisted fantasy which cole included as a bonus track and he steals the fucking show on this song like yeah. his verse is definitely the best how do you part. feel how do you feel about the features though on it i mean kanye did pretty well on it um big sean wasn't too impressive um the features are all right but like i said cole was definitely the standout and for that reason um it ranks pretty high here um but next up where are we at we're at number 77 with born sinner the title track off of the born sinner album and i absolutely love the collaboration that J. Cole has here with James, and it's one of Cole's best title tracks, without a doubt. You think so? Yeah. All right, let's go on to number 76, Knock Knock Off of the Warm Up again. Another song that I love for energy and that I love um, when I'm going through the mixtape. And this was another song that we were considering putting up higher in the list, but ended up clocking it at number 76. Number 75, KOD off of KOD. Um, again, a, a song that I, I like when it first dropped. Like, I was really gravitating towards it because, you know, that was the first time I heard Cole experiment with that type of quick flow. But it wasn't that great of a song when it comes to like let's say aging well i, I still think say. it's pretty good i mean yeah he does come in with like a staccato flow on this trap beat to kind of um package this message and make it speak to the youth but i just love the braggadocious energy talking That's about true. how like no one else could hop on his songs because he doesn't need the features and how nobody could really fuck with him so i love the energy that he projects mm -hmm. but a number where are we at number 74 trouble off of born sinner um yeah i think this again it kind of ranks within the middle tier of Born Sinner, not too memorable of a song for me. Uh, but I like the uplifting solid. energy. I was actually yeah. playing this in the car yesterday, and I love the. I, I, is it a chorus that comes through in midway through a song? Kind of like, um, like you have a bunch of vocals coming through, and then that is how like the verses transition. So I like this too. When I was younger, always a track I enjoyed from J Cole's discography. But let's go on to, um, I believe we're in the morning actually at number seventy three off of Friday Night Lights. This is a very another um, good song. Another good song, and what's cool is that you know. It's about J. Cole and Drake talking about a relationship with women. But what's pretty cool is that, I don't know if you picked up on this, mm -hmm. but Drake's voice for his feature yes. is very raspy, yeah. as if he literally just woke up and he's asking his girl after if he could hit it. And I mean, listen, it's a pretty cool, um, you know, pop rap song, to be honest. I prefer and something like Jodeci Freestyle, though. Oh, for, for this. sure. I, I think the rapping performances on that were better than this. But I, I, I do I, I do like the raspy voice because it does add to the track. It's a fun let's, song. It is a fun song. But let's keep going on to number 72, Nobody's Perfect off of the Sideline Story. Another beautiful message within Cole's catalog. And you're going to find a lot of, like, themes that are similar to other songs within the catalog. So... 
I do like this song at number 72, number 71, Farewell off of Friday Night Lights. How do you feel about this track, bro? Farewell is, uh, yeah, it's definitely one of the, the, be the better tracks off of Friday Night Lights. And um, I think that a lot of people do regard it highly because when it comes down to like those last couple of tracks off an album, I feel like J. Cole always tries to do the most in terms of fitting a bunch of substance and really wrapping up the, the themes and ideas within that tape. And that's what he does in Farewell really well. But at number 70, we have Kevin's Heart off a of KOD. And this is a very relaxing song to listen to. And it I is. feel like all of Cole's melodies are on point. And again, I just like the ideas that he's bringing in terms of infidelity and how that affects both people within a relationship. Yeah, also trying to find redemption in your life if you did something wrong like that and trying to move on from past situations. And as you said, I like the melodies within the song as well. But let's go on to number 69, Interlude Off of the Off Season. This was the single. Pretty cocky from Cole to use an interlude as a single into the off season. It's a big but, flex. But I mean, listen, it only clocks in at what? Maybe a minute and a half to two minutes and it's absolutely immaculate from a rapping standpoint and you knew the energy he was going to come through um, with on the off season. So let's keep going on with this number 68 world is empty off of the warm-up i love this song fantastic i love the message throughout it and when i go back to his earlier mixtapes it's cool to see um what type of mentality he was rolling with when creating these projects and how hungry he was so yeah. that's a number 68. number 67 though we have lost ones off of the sideline story and um let me know what you think about this one because i know you were kind of iffy on the placement but i think the message is pretty cool just because Cole is the king of relatability, and this is a song that's speaking about an unplanned pregnancy and how um, that unplanned pregnancy affects the man, it affects the woman, and all the different decisions that have to be made revolving around the situation. My, my only issue with this song clocking in at, let's say, number 67 is that I may have other songs above it, but I do ah. like I do like the environment he builds within all of the verses. It's cool. Like all, Everything is super structured as far as the lines go. The creative tissues are really nice and put together well as far as line to line goes. But let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to number 66, For Whom the Bell Tolls on 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Um, uh, sorry, not 2014. My bad. I believe it's on For Your Eyes, for your eyes Only. For, for yes. your eyes only. The intro my, off Yeah, there. we made a mistake in the notes here, but yeah, this is a fantastic song as well. I mean, we were having this in contention with um, Ville Mentality, which we included way up on the list. We were also talking about uh, maybe Neighbors as well, like in contention with For Whom the Bell Tolls. But we included this a bit deeper into yes, this, right? Yes, and I love the way that he set the tone, bro, just because, you know, he's singing, I see the rain pouring down before my very eyes. And you hear the sounds of the bell, which often symbolizes someone's death. And it's as if... James knows that he's about to die and then that's kind of walking you and guiding exactly. you into the album. It sets up, it sets up, the, it sets up the scene perfectly for it the does. overall concept. And the jazzy production, only. fucking beautiful. It is beautiful. With you, but at number 65, She Knows off of Born Sinner. I love this song, bro. I don't yeah. care that it's known as like J. Cole's TikTok song. I still think it's fucking brilliant. The hook is super catchy. And it's some of his best melodies he's ever put yeah, into let's say, some absolutely. melodic rapping. And, and it, like, even the verses are super well done. And the sample, bro, is mm. fucking genius. Absolutely. It's probably the best produced song off of Born Sinner. Would it have gone higher maybe if you didn't hear it on TikTok so no, much? No, it doesn't affect okay. it for me. I'll be uh, honest with right. you. But number 64, another popular Cole song. We have Lights Please off of the warm-up. This is the song that blew him up. And do you think that like... Let's say you were listening to the warm-up for the first time. Is that the song that would grab you the most? Um, probably not, because okay. I have ones higher. I mean, the only the only thing with this song with me is maybe the hook on it. Lights, please, lights. Uh, you know, not it's not my favorite hook from him, but I do like the rapping performance. The double meaning is cool about yeah. how it's about him, you know, spending night with a girl, but also about his relationship with hip hop. I thought that it was apparently uh, this was also the song that made Jay Z sign him. Apparently, absolutely. apparently when he ended up finding him. But let's keep going with this. Number sixty three, Home for the Holidays off of Friday Night Lights and it's a cool concept song to the record because I mean um, what Cole's kind of you know I, I feel as if what he's portraying through this is kind of I, I, would you say being homesick more or less yeah. and like kind of feeling like he wants to be back into like an environment where now he's looking at his life let's say from a past view and seeing like fuck you know I should have maybe appreciated things a bit better from let's say my from this point of view that I'm currently yeah in it's at a the very moment. gracious song from Cole for sure but at number 62 Chaining Day off of Born Sinner and I like the production. It kind of sounds very um, fairy tale esque. I would say kind of sounds like a has lullaby a good, yeah, too. Yeah, has a good like energy. To yeah, it. and I just like the idea that like Cole is rapping from the perspective of someone that's buying all these chains, buying all this jewelry, and he's realizing that it doesn't fulfill him. And I think it's cool because the production is making it seem like he's in this perfect fairy tale esque environment, but really the reality is is that this is not really going to feed his soul. So that was pretty cool. Number sixty one, Hunger on Hillside, off of the off season, and it's pretty funny like. That when we redid all the dives to prepare for this episode, we started to realize how many top tier Cole songs 
are on the off season. Yeah, this is crazy. And Hunger on Hillside is a, is a great song to close off this album. I think that it perfectly encapsulates um, what type of environment, you know, J. Cole is in as a rapper at the moment. And again, it's the title track, you know, just the title of the track, Hunger on Hillside. You just, you hear that hunger in J. Cole's voice and it feels like he's now reflecting over this kingdom that he's, you know, built up. You think up. Baz is the star of the show though on that song? Um... No, honestly, I think J. Cole probably still had the best performance on it, at least in I, my opinion. I would go by as for sure. All right, let's go on to number 60. Wet Dreams off of 2014, Four Seals Drive. Do you think a lot of people are going to include this higher up in their rankings as far as their favorite Bro, J. Cole I just Cole saw songs? a video of Cole performing this in the UK for the Wireless Festival crowd of thousands of people singing it word for word bro. yeah it's the impact his, is crazy the impact and is i think crazy. a lot of people have attached a lot of nostalgia behind it and what's funny to me is that like i've knocked this song before for it being kind of cheesy and cringy but i think that if any other rapper did this song and tackled the storytelling elements it would not have came off as well as cold no it, you know for sure I mean? not that it actually has really good context as far as you know what 2014 has going on but let's go on to number 59 growing simba um off of the warm-up one of my favorite uh, concept songs as far as his mixtape days i really like the writing on this i find he was finding his groove as far as storytelling goes throughout here i like how he's and comparing exactly. himself to uh to simba from the lion king it was a pretty cool, cool concept. metaphor yeah it was a cool concept um number 58 just to get by off of the warm-up um, again, one of those soulful cold tracks where he's spazzing out from start to finish and really big stand up. But number 57, punching the clock from the off season. Why does this rank so high for you? Oh, I love the energy within this track. And I love that it's placed at the beginning of it because you have a bunch of strong tracks at the beginning of the off season. It kind of adds into me. But, you know, you're going to see that stuff like applying pressure for me is, you know, higher up on this list. Still great J. Cole song. But let's go on to number 56, hold it down off of the warm up. Again, another song that gives you a lot of energy. I really fuck with it when it comes to the warm up. And I do think now a lot of songs in the warm-up are going to start becoming top tier for us and like that's where we tried to include them onto the list number 55 cost me a lot off of friday night lights why do you like this song so i much, love man? the song just because of the sample and the way that cole is kind of interacting with it um it has this sweetness to it and i think that it's really a big standout off of fnl but number 54 can't get enough off of the sideline story featuring Trey songs and I feel like I'm on like an all-inclusive like resort and there's a live band kind of performing in front of me. Yeah, the sample and flip is incredible. On great that summer song and another radio-friendly track that Cole absolutely annihilates, bro. Like he's yeah. really good at making that link between pop and hip hop. So that's a standout. Number 53, Saint Trope Tropez off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive. Um, a beautiful song, sets up atmosphere really well, and it's Cole kind of talking about the paradise that appears mm -hmm. to be once he enters Hollywood that doesn't turn out the way that he thought it would. Um, number, not much yeah. else to add for that yeah, one. Yeah, nothing much at number 53 for St. Chopez. But let's go on to number 52, Premeditated Murder off of Friday Night Lights. Um, definitely in the top tier as far as that mixtape goes. And when I was doing this revive, this was one of the songs that really caught my eye again. You know, like I was going through the track list and I'm like, how I kind of did my die for it. I was writing, okay, top 30 for this one or top 25. Where does it rank within it? And I had Premeditated Murder more around the 35 to 40 range, at least on my list. And it was a pleasure going back to Word this Wordplay was on point. Mm -hmm. bars like cribs got much rooms portobello <laughs> so you got some of those kinds of lines in there where it's kind of just playful um but number 51 we get close off of the off season and this is really cool because cole is kind of giving you this first person view of experiences in the ville kind of witnessing one of his friends going down the wrong path and the consequences of that beautiful production as well but at number 50 we have power trip off of born sinner and um it's a, another cool, fun song. Love Miguel's vocals on here. And I think that, again, one of those pop rap friendly songs that Cole really executed well. Yeah, on. definitely in the upper tier of his pop rap songs. Yeah. But let's keep going on with this number 49, Heartache Off of the Warm Up. Um, another good song on here, Heartfelt Song as well. And I love it when Cole's able to get into this bag where, you know, he's introspective. And like this was where, you know, you start to see that within the warm up, you know, how he started to think more on a 4D basis. Number 48, The Welcome Off of the Warm Up. This was such a great way to start off the mixtape and sets the tone perfectly. A lot of energy coming through. Cole absolutely rips his performances. I really like that. Nice jazzy sample as absolutely. well. But at number 47, Land of the Snakes from Born mm -hmm. Sinner. And listen, this is one of my favorite Cole songs just because um, he really, you know, makes you feel like he's homesick and it kind of like any time that I've kind of let's say been away from home or missed home I would play this song and it's like 
he's bumping music that he would yeah. on a street close I, to I'm him just, where he I, lived in his neighborhood, and I that kind of always made me relate to it. And I don't know why you're not that big of a fan of the no, song. No, I wanted to include this more down because like I know a lot of people fuck with it, and I do like the replay value behind it. I play a lot. It's just like that whole like cherry on top. Even like, the Outcast that, beat that he rapped over I, I, it's was fire, great. but I mean like uh, it's not that great. But let's go Disagree. on to number forty six. Bad take. Uh, <laughs> autograph <laughs> off of Friday Night Lights. Um, another standoff for me off of FNL when I was a kid. I love this song always never never a skip for me within my rotation song makes and you feel accomplished absolutely you know definitely I mean? one of those j cole songs that make you feel empowered but let's keep going on with this number 45 rich off of born sinner this is one of my favorite songs off of born sinner um i love this track in the car and i like to play this also at night um i love you know the the flow that cole comes in uh, comes in with because it's super relaxed and i like those types of flows and cadences from cole Always gets me intrigued into a track list. Let's keep going on with this. Number 44, last call off of the warm-up. Um, this was the perfect outro, and it's kind of like J. Cole taking the same victory lap that Kanye did with the college dropout, and then you see how he has an extended, um, let's say, runtime at the end of the song to talk about you know, his process and you know how he was able to get to where he's at at the moment, and it was cool because he's kind of calling his success for the rest of his career at this point. Yeah, so, and a lot of nice valuable track. lessons. Like He's talking about not making the cut to a basketball team, and it kind of plays into that idea of you know you could either quit or you can go harder which has been kind of the motto for Cole for such a long time so it kind of encapsulates what Cole is all about message wise really well but at number 43 we have Deja Vu off of For Your Eyes Only <laughs> um Great club-friendly song, and I love the R&B sample that he raps over. Yeah, and I also love how his voice gets pitched down for the hook of the song as well. Um, kind of adds a bit more emotion and a, like a, a bit more of a kick to, let's say, the song. And I love the I love the beat him back. So, number forty-three, number forty-two, though applying pressure off of the off season. I love this track, man. I, I think that it's easily in the top tier of the off season, and now we're starting to get into the strongest of Cole's catalog. So applying pressure, I could have even seen this going into the thirties. Yeah, to be even the, the laser gun sound effects. I love that Cole through that in production wise and the track presence is just so dominant yeah here, bro. coming back and saying listen oh. you know I'm still on my game you know like you guys really have to watch out because I'm gonna come back and snatch that crown number 41 though see you rolled off of Friday Night Lights one of my favorite mixtape songs from Cole I think it's so well written and when I was also including this I had this more in the top 25 range when I was doing my notes but we ended up including it at yeah number and I 41. love when he brings I think this one is top tier because he's bringing a true story and putting it into his music mm -hmm. because it's actually a tribute to a five-year-old girl um, that passed away by the name of Shania Davis. Rest in peace to her. And she was tragically murdered in the Ville at the age of five. So it was really um, touching to see him pay tribute and um, yeah, he really executed well. Yeah, on that and track. I also like that's when you know I, I feel like it's also nice to see that Cole's pen started to evolve around this time when it comes to Friday Night Lights, especially with something like Sea World starts to think on a deeper level and wasn't afraid to go into taboo subjects that he felt like he needed to speak on. But number forty, Let Nas Down off of Born Sinner. Um, this song is really big within his catalog because I believe it was when what was it when he dropped the work out? I mean, it was Nas who said that he wasn't impressed with it and said, "Man, you could have gone in a much different direction." Yeah, and that's what Cole kind of talks about in the song is you know letting Nas down but also letting people around him down so how do you feel about the track as a whole and could you have seen this maybe going a bit further within the track list I well, mean in the rankings no I think me. it's kind of perfectly ranked and I love the saxophone in terms of production and I really think that um, it was cool to see um, J. Cole show kind of a more human side of him that like yeah. it matters what his peers think and, and it was who his also, admirers think it was think also a nice break on Born Sinner because Born Sinner is also very braggadocious as far as like content matter goes so it was nice to see that level down off of yeah. Born Sinner 39 we have Enchanted off of Friday Night Lights what an underrated and, song yeah bro. I love you know, J. Cole's take on Tupac's ambitions as a writer and um, yeah he's just kind of rapping about his environment is really it as, well is it his ambitions as a writer it's not sampled but I think he's doing an interpolation of it okay and, I'm gonna um, check that out yeah it's it. a bit depressing as a song talking about how things never seem to change where he's from but still a very powerful track but number 38 we have neighbors off of for your eyes only and this has a pretty cool uh, message just because the true story about how j cole was trying to record he rented a house um, in north carolina and because of how many people were coming in and out of the house people thought that they were selling dope out of the out of the crib so yeah even like even talking about you know him and his boy smoking blunts in the backyard and him having rapper cars but at the end of the day they were just chilling you know and making then music ended up raiding his crib and ended up making the news as well but let's keep going on with this number 37 get away off of the warm-up definitely maybe top five within that track list for the warm-up one of his best mixtape songs ever i love the hunger on this song and definitely always and captivates me when i go back into that track list but let's go on to number 36 dollar 
dollar in a dream two off of the warm up. The best well, dollar in a dream, yeah. right? Why is this better than number three? For I think you? it's better just uh, performance wise. He has this double time flow here that's vicious. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, um, it's just cool that he's kind of rapping about how he has all this ambition, but he maybe doesn't have the privilege or the same opportunity as other people to get there. So love that track. Number 35, My Life off of the off season. I don't know why you throw this song shade sometimes. <laughs> I, 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 it's not that I throw it shade. Listen, it's, I, it's a perfectly complete song. It, it is a good song. I just feel like it's the Alibaba version of, of a lot. Like that's no, kind of the way so I feel about bro. it. Like if, it, if this... It, Everyone plays their role yeah, to perfection I, at the end I, of the I day. agree with you, Moray. did a fantastic job. 21 Savage had a great verse. The Hunger from J. Cole is fantastic. Top tier on the offseason. I just think we, we we got a good rating for it. Number 35 okay. is definitely a nice placement. Number 34, one of my favorite J. Cole songs of all time. And if it wasn't for you, I'd probably have this much higher up on my list. It's a great song. <laughs> Rise and shine off of the sideline story. The way that Jay-Z comes in um, at the beginning talking about him eating Apple Jacks and him wanting to sign him because he doesn't want to start some shit is such a sick way um to open up the song and rise and shine cold world baby like this puts you into your zone automatically. and he kind of gets out of his comfort zone in terms of like his vocals as like he starts off with like the stuttering flow and i think that when there's creative choices like that done within a song it'll make your rank higher because it's a risk that ends up paying off yeah. but um next up at number 33 we have 03 adolescence off of 2014 forest hills drive another all-time great cold song and he's kind of taking you down a trip down memory lane back to his high school days and yeah i love when he reminisces in that kind of way and really takes you back to another time in his life yeah one of the best tracks off of for your eyes only and then we're gonna get on to part off two of which 2014 uh, off of uh 2014 forest Hills oh Drive. my bad yeah. yeah why do we have for your eyes only on the list my bad we see we fucked up in some of our notes here anyways get, number 32 31. 32 or 31? we're at 32 right 32, now okay. she's mine part one off of for your eyes only um, I'm in love with the violins and all of those delicate strings in the song. I think the production is immaculate and one of Cole's best singing performance because he's not doing too much. He's not overextending his notes. It's simple and well executed as yeah, well. Yeah, I was like that's what I like about Fur Your Eyes only is that there was experimentation, but within the track list you see how everything was super well calculated in the context of, you know, the theme of the album and, you know, with him trying to show so much pain and emotion throughout these songs. But number thirty one. Let go of my hand off of the off season. Definitely one of my favorite tracks from 2021. I love the message that he's giving his son and the whole concept of one day he's going to have to let go of his son's hand to be able to have him live in real life time, have him experience his own things and how that's played an effect on his life. I love the jazzy production as well. So I think it clocks in that's perfectly. That's going to be timeless, I think. Oh, in for Cole's sure. Catalog's going to be a timeless song. Absolutely. Um, in terms of the message. But number 30, back to the topic, freestyle off of Friday Night Lights. Vicious. I think there's no way he actually freestyled this though. Like it was too fucking good, bro. It for was it to have been such a good, like yeah, something you'd find on LA Leakers. You know, that's the kind of way I feel about this uh, freestyle and. The cool thing about those early mixtapes is that Cole really wants to showcase his rapping abilities to the world, and this was the perfect track to do so. So, clocks in at number 30. Number 29, I Get Up by The Warm Up, one of the most uplifting songs within his whole fucking catalog, bro. I love this track. So, why do we clock it at number 29, I man? just think that, you know, it feels like you're kind of in this jazz lounge with Cole, and I love the fact that you could kind of you know pick apart his passion because he's humming to the beat as well he's yeah. really getting into the groove of the composition puts you on sort of a higher level when you're listening to this track like puts you in such a good energy and uplifts you at any time that you listen to it number 28 though forbidden fruit i think the biggest sin within j cole's fucking catalog is not having j you know kendrick have a verse i on know here. bro but it's, it would have probably ranked higher if oh, it had the verse would this song be top 10 in his catalog no, if you no. had probably yeah. top 20 though okay okay have top it, 20. regardless though what a great fucking song i love kendrick on the hook as well and that jazzy production is so fucking sample sick. the tribe called quest real i yeah. actually i never knew that Ela actually. E electric you know. relaxation but anyways number 27 1985 off of kod some people might think that we're placing this a bit too high but i love how he kind of predicted the, the, the downfalls of a lot of rappers yeah. and not only that but i just think that his menacing approach the way that he's kind of like you know come here little man let me talk to you he's yeah. kind of belittling his opponents and it's one of the most underrated diss songs of all time in my yeah opinion. he really puts you on a humble you know what i'm trying to say and then after that little pump ends up doing an interview with him so <laughs> 1985 is definitely iconic to his um to his discography but number 26 
probably one of my favorites off of KOD as well as Brackets, man. I love this song and I love the way it ends off because it talks about, you know, a mother losing her son and then after that having to pay her taxes right over and then it kind of just shows how fucking twisted and backward society works and how the government works and then he's questioning, you know, where his taxes are going and how they could be put into better place. Talks about how, you know, backwards politics is. So a lot of deep messaging in there and I love the production too. Absolutely. Number 25, we're in the top 25, bro. It's getting serious. Now, no role models off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive, his only diamond song. And I feel like if somebody was to do like a karaoke for a J. Cole song, they would choose this one. Definitely his most singable hook. And I just think the atmosphere with the birds chirping is amazing. Production's flawless. J. Cole's performances are really strong. And it is one of the best, despite it being such a big hit. It's fantastic. But number 24, she's mine part two off of For Your Eyes Only. Why is this better than part one? Um, I just think the the writing is more emotional. I like the approach that he's kind of, you know, rapping and singing about his daughter and how much, you know, she plays this precious role within his life. It was just, it was Cole kind of just being superhuman. And I I really like that. Yeah, I think there was a lot of effort put into the song as well. And I love that sort of emotional grab that Cole's able to put into his writing. One of his most emotional songs ever, to be honest with you. But number 23, one of my favorite rapping performances ever from J. Cole. And this is Two-Face off of Friday Night Lights. If you had to ask an OG J. Cole fan, you know, like, what's your favorite, you know, song from the mixtape days? Do you think they would put this in their top five? I think they would put it in their top five. And it's just, it's cool because I love when Cole gives you great concepts song that's what this is you're getting the dichotomy of his personality two different sides of j cole so really well executed number 22 though we move on to vil mentality off of four year eyes only so underrated and i love how he's kind of sounding like he's crying on the opening of the track and then he's kind of getting into the mentality of people feeling like they're trapped and that they can't get out of the hood and how that relates back to james who's the main character it kind of of feels like j cole's you to be honest with you that's the kind of interesting that's the way that's that's, that's kind of the way i feel about it it's it's definitely different like much different sonically and singing performance wise it's just like the emotions that are coming out of that singing performance are so well done and i think that it adds so much to that for your eyes only track list that we had to also that sequence where he's like dirt on my name never like that flow is riveting so sick bro what a great flow he caught after that singing performance but let's keep going on with this number 21 this is one of my favorite j cole songs ever I wanted to listen. I wanted to include this in the top fifteen. Lou wanted to put it a bit lower because you got a good rating on it, though. Till Infinity by the Warm Up. This is a beat that is perfectly suited for J Cole's rapping style, bro. Like even when I went back to you know his part two of this, you know, Alley Leakers. Leakers freestyle that dropped before the off season last year. I just realized how perfectly suited that production is for him. Um, goaded song for me within his catalog. But let's go on to number 20. Fire Squad off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive. A lot of people have this or a Tale of Two Cities in their contention when it comes to, let's say, a more aggressive J. Cole off of that 2014 track list. But I think it clocks in quite nicely at that number 20. Yeah, placement. he just goes into full attack mode and he's singling people out and he's just not taking shit from anybody in this song. Love how menacing he is. But number 19, Sideline Story. I Off of the Sideline Story, um, you get three classic verses, three different stories within each verse. And the way that he's kind of even predicting his success, saying that I'll be around for three to four eras. And now we're seeing that he will probably get to that marker. Yeah. It's yeah, cool yeah. to see someone predict their own success the way that he did. And it. I love this hook. I think it's one of the strongest hooks in his whole catalog because he's kind of asking, you know, like, what's the blueprint to get off of the sideline? And like that hunger is haunting him. And you could feel that throughout the track list. Number 18, though, apparently off a of 2014 Forest Stills Drive. I love this song, bro. I love, I think this is some of his best singing performances within yes. his whole catalog, to be honest with you. So why do we have it clocked in so hot? Um, I just love, again, how how gentle and smooth the singing really is and it sounds like you're kind of you know being a stripped stripped away from everything that holds you back in life it feels like cole is being liberated and i feel like i feel free listening to this song yeah, you know i, do, what I, I mean? do too as well but let's keep going on with this let's go on to number 17 95 south off of the off season i know you're a massive you know fan of this song because it is his best intro let me ask you that bro you know how like fifa had like inform cards <laughs> this would be j cole's fucking you know like 95 rated inform card in a fifa game bro i just think the double entendres the punch lines one of his best ever lyrical efforts mm-hmm. add in the boy wanda and coleman production what a beautiful composition Gives you that Jay-Z energy. Fucking flawless song for me, to be honest. Now we're getting into the songs that are flawless or near flawless within like this top 20 range. And and talking about one of his best mixtape songs ever, let's talk about Vilmatic, bro. Like, 
Oh, man. Like, okay, listen, you know, if Devil in a New Dress wasn't good enough, take that fucking beat and give it to J. Cole and see what happens with it, bro. And you're going to get some of his best fucking rapping that you've heard overall in his whole career. I think that this is one of the best songs that you saw early on from his career. And it's kind of foreshadowing for how aggressive and how fucking passionate he could get with J. His Cole writing. or Rick Ross and Devil in a New Dress. Wow, beat. wow, 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 wow. Um, I think I still go Rose. Uh, I think I still go Rose. Um,. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Let me let me go Ricky with it. I'd still go Ricky yeah. with it, but at the end of the day, this J. Cole performance is goaded for me. Let's keep going on with this. Let's go back to the offseason at number 15 with the climb back. Do you think this fits the offseason track list? Because this was released, um, I believe, in 2020 off of the three-pack three Louis C.P. So do you think... Two-pack, yeah. It was a two-pack? Yeah. It was true. It was with Lion Kings on Ice and then... Yeah, exactly. But there, yeah, so. amazing song. Another showcase of what he's able to do as an MC. And I love the subject matter. And I just... Bars like I flipped like exclamation points always really ring hard for me. But number 14, Dead Presidents 2 off of the warm up. Another example of Cole taking a very popular beat and kind of, you know, taking the risk, but seeing it paying off because he executes really well on it. And That's I love how he's kind of rapping with the Jay Z cadences and kind of using rhymes similar to Hove and paying homage in a very clever way. Yeah, not only that, but this is one of my favorite beats of all time and for any rapper at that point and I love how he's able to perfectly encaptivate that. I think it is, um, do you think it's the best uh, song off of the warm-up? Yeah, at this yeah, point it is, right? I think yeah, it is. Because now that's our last song for the warm-up. It's going to number 13, one of J. Cole's most emotional songs and that is Window Pain. But this has a bounce to it as well. That's what's so cool about the track. So is it one of your most played off of K.O.D.? as a whole oh for sure i just think that you know it really pulls on your heartstrings but it's a banger at the same time like yeah. you said and he really makes you feel empathy you know for the little girl that's talking at the beginning of the song talking about witnessing you know her cousin getting shot to the face yeah. so i love everything that cole did here very complete and full song but number 12 a classic g-o-m-d off of 2014 yes, forest hills drive um, the vocal sample is fucking iconic yeah, and for sure. I just love the way that he's spazzing off and I love how his mind mindset is kind of shifting from verse to verse mm -hmm. as he realizes the evils and the demonic stuff involved with getting into the industry sometimes. Yeah, even even at that, you know, the music video playing into the whole slavery thing and how, you know, that that's kind of a metaphor and like, you know, something, you know, some shadowing to be able to see that he feels like he's a slave to Hollywood within that lifestyle. So I love the concept behind the record. One of the best um, sample flips within his whole fucking discography. But let's keep going on with this. Number 11, Immortal off of For Your Eyes Only. Most underrated track within his catalog, you think? I don't see enough people talking about it. I think there's song, another one bro. that's more underrated that we'll get into later. But yeah, Immortal is phenomenal and it makes you feel invincible listening to this song. You know what I mean? I just that's think facts. Um, radiant energy from Cole all throughout. But number 10, top we are 10, in the baby. top 10, bro. This was tough to really put together Did for you guys. Did we spend the most time here on our Yeah, we, we absolutely. I think we took like 40 minutes just to kind <laughs> of uh, order the top 10. Number 10, Villuminati off of Born Sinner. Listen, the composition is fucking incredible. I the mean, rapping performance the speedy vicious. tempo of the instrumental too, bro. The biggie sample from Juicy, the way that it's kind of panning from left to right. I just think that the way that it was executed production-wise was flawless. And um, one of his best braggadocious songs too. Oh, absolutely. You see the confidence absolutely oozing out of him. And I love the verses that were penned here. Super vicious and just showed the type of dominance he had as a rapper coming up in that early 2010 decade. But number nine, Breakdown, man. So this was big on your list, bro. You really wanted to include this in the top 10. I was a bit iffy about it. I was more looking at that high, you know, 10s, this early 20s. This to me is the most underrated okay. song. Breakdown off of the okay, sideline story. And I think there's a lot of reasons. First of all, he's rapping on a beat that he doesn't usually rap over. There's kind of this very... Um, I would say very accentuated flute that's playing throughout it. And that's not common for Cole to rap over that. And it's just the storytelling and the way that he's going into so much depth and vivid imagery from verse to verse, talking about his biological father having left him and kind of what the impact and what the consequences have been after that departure and how he's thinking mm -hmm. about maybe reconnecting with him. And I just think that on a personal level, on a personal level, this cuts really deep. But number eight, A Tale of Two Cities off of 2014 Forest Hills Drive. I feel like a lot of people have this at number one, bro. And it's just because of 
the amazing storytelling that the yeah. two different sides of the vill right yeah not only that but the aggression that goes into this song is absolutely crazy it just shows you how brutal it could be growing up in those types of environments and it's cool how he kind of took like an illmatic sort of point of view from it where he you know kind of describes two different perspectives looking in and then after that looking out of it like i think that's so cool of the two verses and um one of the first songs in j cole's catalog that i was like instantly hooked dude like when i went through that 2014 track list definitely one of the biggest standouts for me but number seven the best song off of kod absolutely once an addict interlude three minutes of pure sheer pain bro like i don't even know how to describe this song it's so haunting and menacing as a production you know him talking about his mom opening up a cheap bottle of chardonnay um drinking her sorrows away how that has an effect on his life talking about how that's manifested into his rap career now and how he sees everything it's a oh, it's, it's a perfect song in J. Cole's catalog. You, but when Cole gets a, as personal as he does on tracks like this, it's beautiful, it's cinematic, and it really um, touches your soul, to be honest. But number six, we have a fan favorite here, Too Deep for the Intro off of Friday Night Lights. This and Erica Badu sound that is instrumental crazy. of Didn't You Know from Erica Badu Nuts. is the perfect backdrop for Cole to give you some of the most soulful and heartfelt rhymes of his career. And um, even just like the certain lines that he he emanates here are beautiful because they really resonate so lines like if they don't know your dreams and they can't shoot them down shit like that bro about just the way that he's moving and thinking he's just advanced and he and knows how good this song is oh, even when sure. he's rapping it he's like listen if, if it's too deep for the intro fuck it i'm still using it yep. bro. he doesn't even care and i think that a lot of people use this as their favorite because it would it's one of the most concise j cole songs that you're gonna hear within his mixtape run still timeless to this day age super well let's go on to number five man this is where we get into the top five j cole songs of all time january 28th of 2014 four stills drive and a lot of people say that this is kind of like the control verse for j cole coming in and saying that you know i'm snatching everything name dropping people saying that you're this you're that but you're not jermaine cole you're not born on january 28th and i have this game on lock kind of like the game set match you know no one's gonna fuck with me as an mc and not only that but i believe um what's the sample it's uh it's in a jap it's, what's the sample? I'm not, I'm sky sure fi restaurant sample, sample. Um, I'm not sure, but super iconic sample. Yeah. You guys let me know in the comments section. I, I love the song. Exactly. I think it's flawless, and I like the idea that I feel like the journey of this song is him climbing the ladder, pushing people down so we can get to the top of it, and you see his desire to grab the throne here. And how he's going to be improving over his albums to come. But number four, before I'm gone off of FNL, this best mixtape song ever for me, bro. There's absolutely no doubt here. Um, I love his rapping performances all the way through. Immaculate, uh, immaculate lyricism. And when when you're listening to Friday Night Lights, you start to see how this Too Deep for Intro, um, even something like, let's say, Vilmatic, are going to start laying down the foundations for what J. Cole is going to become as a rapper within his studio albums. So Never well sold together. the rock and look, I made it, bitch. <laughs> That's all I got to say for before right, I'm man. gone. Number three, change off of for your eyes only another song that's super underrated and i feel like not everybody's gonna have it that high up but a lot of people respect it though especially within the twitter yeah. community and so. ari lennox's uh, performance is fucking beautiful i think that her background vocals are immaculate here and i love how j cole was kind of rapping from james's perspective and the way that he's flowing bro it's like fucking currents in an ocean it's it's, it's beautiful perfect. and it's such a smooth listen to one of the smoothest listens within his whole catalog and um listen if something like let's say high for hours would have been into this it would have been added into this list because it's not officially released um let's say through an album or a mixtape i would have had it you know on that same level as far as change goes just for like smooth rapping not yeah. as far as like a song goes just for j cole being able to speak speak his mind what's, you know? what's cool too is that j cole is rapping about like the change he wants to see in the world and within inner cities but also there's a change in perspective from james to j cole even the concept behind the song talking about how if you want to see change in the world you have to step in and do your work yes. and you can't just watch and expect to see that all so, right top two this is where we had a debate bro we because, spent a good 20 minutes on yeah this and one. i respect what we ended up choosing at number one just because i think that it is his best written song but let's get into number two what i think should be Probably the best J. Cole song, but I'm kind of juggling between this and the number one pick as well. It's Love Yours off of 2014 Forest Hills Universal Drive. And message. I think that this is the most impactful J. Cole song of all time. I think that this song has literally saved lives. And there was a man, um, a homeless man from Chicago who penned a letter to J. Cole saying that um, he was thinking about taking his own life. And then he had ended up hearing this album. And once he landed on this song, it made him rethink his entire perspective 
and it shifted his mentality and made him fight for more. And just the idea of there's no such thing as a life that's better than yours. That's one of the most important lines, I think, in hip hop history. And Cole was one of the first people to bring that to our ears on a mainstream level. So forever, forever will resonate with me. And I think that it's just it's the replay value on this song is probably one of the best in his catalog as well i think what this message means to a lot of people is just optimism you know and being able to cloud out certain judgments about your own life and being able to be you know a friend to yourself talk to yourself like a friend and understand that you're in a unique position and you should be grateful for what you have in your life so clocks in at number two but Listen, man, I told you the best song of all time on J. Cole's is For Your Eyes Only. For Your Eyes Only, bro. And the way that this completely wraps up the overall packaging of For Your Eyes Only is fucking immaculate. Um, I, I think that it's one of my most played songs in J. Cole's discography. Um, I love the production in back because, yes, you have this jazzy production, but it's still super well done. It's almost mysterious in a certain way. And what are you getting? Like fucking four verses of perfectly written bars and storytelling that's completely tying into the overall album. Album. So why do you think people consider this his best song overall? Well, first of all, it's an eight-minute epic, so you're getting a lot from J. Cole in terms of substance, in terms of different cadences, and I just think that you're getting the full scope here of his abilities as a poet, his abilities as an album maker, the way that he's able to um, dot the I's and cross the T's for the entire track list, and so many cinematic qualities too, like the idea that you hear you know, the cassette kind of coming yeah. out at the end, knowing that James's goal was fulfilled that his daughter ended up hearing his story and why he ended up um, you know leaving this earth so soon and again I just think that it's his best written yeah, song even even when he's talking about you know James like calling him up and talking about like man I'm having premonitions man you know I'm having these visions I won't be here for much longer I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. Um, and him like just talking about I, I want you I want you to play this for my daughter you know I want you to go through this and really fulfill my wishes as a man so gives you chills gives you chills guys but that is our official ranking let us know where we got it right let us know where we fucked up and guys listen it's always fun doing these rankings rankings because it's always subjective at the end of the day you know you might not have our number one you know but at the end of the day j cole's music is still fantastic so let us know what you think about our rankings in the comment section and as we said at the beginning of this episode we are going to be doing more lists like this so let us know too which rapper do you guys want to see next in this sort of series so guys thank you guys so much for watching this it's always a pleasure doing content for you and we'll catch you in the next ranking